Hey, my name is Selena. Um, today we're going to be talking with Kara Frazier on uh, her upcoming single, Words. Um, hey, Kara. Hi, Selena. How are you? Good. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm a singer-songwriter based out of Nashville. Uh, originally, I'm from Florida, and my genre is like a blend of pop and soul. Um, so yeah, how I ended up in Nashville is I, when I was 18, I decided to go to school at Belmont and that allowed me to just keep pursuing my career. So I've been here about seven years now. That's awesome. What did you study in Belmont? Music business, actually. Oh, cool. Um, a couple of my coworkers went to Belmont, so that, yeah, um, nope. it seems like a really great school. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun. Um, you know, they have like so many great programs, but definitely their music business program is one of their top, uh, you know, programs. And so it was exciting to get to go there and learn from people yeah. that are like working in the industry every day. So Yeah, sounds like it. What do you like doing outside of making music? So at the start of COVID, I got super into true crime podcast. And I think I've heard a lot of people saying that they've gotten into this lately, but um, I've always been interested in, you know, true crime and like, serial killers, as weird as that sounds. Um, I think it's fascinating, like the psychology behind all of it. So my favorite one that uh, I found is Crime Junkie. If okay. you haven't listened to it, maybe check it out if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, I haven't heard about that. I've only heard of My Favorite Murder and then um, my, one of my friends actually does the research for lore. I don't know if you've heard of lore. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah, it's like a two-person team. So, yeah, super cool. Um, and, like, she just has been doing the research since the beginning. And then there's the guy that does the narrating. I can't remember his name. But, yeah. Um, and then one that I got into recently was Dead Rabbit Radio. It's not really true crime, but it's, like, kind of got a supernatural twist to it. And it's just basically, like, weird stuff that happens. And I think you totally dig it. It's basically there's just this guy talking to himself in his closet and laughing at his own jokes. It's hilarious. <laughs> like I do every day. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, it, it's it's really great. And really awkward too. It just like it just, it just embodies this awkwardness and it just makes you feel so much better about everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll definitely have to check that out. Yeah. Well, uh, can you tell us a rose and a thorn of 2020 as a whole for you, or is that too broad? No, I think that's a great question, and it kind of helps me put things into perspective, you know? Um, so a rose of 2020 is that I got engaged oh, on New God. Year's, so that was a really beautiful way to start out the year, um, and my future in-laws moved to Nashville in the summer, so... My fiance and I have gotten to spend tons of time with them and just like quality time that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, just being an artist, it gets so busy. And before COVID, I was on the go constantly. So yeah, so that was a really good positive thing to happen. Um, a thorn for me was losing the ability to perform live for a crowd, you know? Um, and I think like a lot of people are missing live music, but yeah, that's such a big piece of being a musician to me, and um, it's what gives me the most joy. So I'm excited to get that back for sure. Yeah, you seem to be doing live stream shows and like kind of trying to find that happy medium though as well. So like that just that seems pretty cool too. Um, I know it's nothing compared to live shows, but like you know you get, you're making the best of what you have from what it seems like, and that is just so inspirational. Thank you. Yeah, it definitely helps to be able to connect with an audience, even if it is through the screen, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, who are your greatest in, uh, musical influences in the industry? There are a lot, but I'll kind of narrow it down. Um, so when I started, you know, discovering music on my own, I got really into classic soul. Uh, two of my favorites are Sam Cooke and Nina Simone. They're just amazing storytellers and really encompass like um, what's going on in the world, you know, when they were writing music. And I just think that's such an amazing skill. So uh, as far as jazz goes, I, I love jazz. Are you a jazz fan at all? Uh, I've gotten into it, like really, really into it. Um, it's our wedding playlist. It was all older jazz. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't oh, pull out anything like else. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I love that. Um, 
So yeah, like jazz influences would be Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, you know, the yeah, classics. Yeah, the but, classics. Yeah. <laughs> but I personally love Nora Jones and Melody Gardot. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she's right. like, yeah, she really makes you feel like you took like a um, time machine back to the 1940s, you know? Um, oh, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, as far as rock goes, I love Kings of Leon. That's my all-time favorite rock band. Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, for like pop influences, I love Lana Del Rey, Florence and the Machine. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I'm really obsessed with like uh, Marcus King, St. Paul and the Broken Bones, Michael Kiwanuka. So yeah, I mean, there's a million gazillion like influences, but it's cool to kind of be able to blend them all together in my own writing. Yeah, I could definitely see, um, I could see a little bit of Etta James in your work. Um, just a little bit, uh, just like, yeah, yeah. I don't really know how to describe it, but um, I can definitely sense that jazz and soul, um, as well as Kings of Leon. I could sense a little bit of Kings of Leon in there, so that didn't really surprise me too much. Um, awesome. But yeah, I love Florence and Machine. Right? Have you seen it live yet? Yes. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Is like that is actually the best concert I've ever been to. Yeah, I. Um, I've seen her live twice, and my ultimate goal is to like get a photo pass with her show. I feel like I'll retire as soon as I get, <laughs> as soon as I get yeah. a photo pass for her show, because like if that's you're like I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. It. I'm done. <laughs> Bye, guys. Yes. <laughs> oh. yes, she's amazing live, you yeah. know, and just like she's barefoot and running around yeah. and like doing rain dances, but her vocals are spot on. It's just really, really great. I don't know how she moves so much yet. It has so much vocal control, and like it just blows my mind. And I just yeah. want to giggle and scream and like run yeah. around with her on stage. And that just right. like, that's so amazing and so weird. And cool. I feel like you would have to see one of the shows to really understand like exactly yes. what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you really do because I so I recently watched their NPR performance um, on Tiny Desk, and it was funny because Florence Welch was so shy and they even talk about that in the description they're like yeah she kept saying like she wished she had a big stage and like you know could really do her thing but I mean she was still amazing but it was just interesting like this really shy woman can all of a sudden turn into this like total powerhouse on stage fearless you know so anyway, I have a lot of respect totally for makes her. Sense. Um, if you like I could honestly talk about Florence for uh, like hours but <laughs> um, she she seems like that kindred soul and that kindred spirit, and she has this different kind of persona on stage. I think she's even talked about it um, and how she's had to like make it more who she really is uh, at post ceremonials era because of stuff that went on in her life. So mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, oh, I could talk about her for ages. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. She's amazing. Uh, who? So I mean. Yeah, I might not. I mean, I might now already know this, but who would your dream musical collaboration be with? <laughs> yeah, I just gave it away, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a pretty easy <laughs> one once we once we start talking about her. <laughs> I know, right? Um, but if I could pick a second one, um, it would be Hozier. Yeah. Um, God, he's just amazing. Everything about his writing and his singing is so soulful, but it's so relevant. Like his mm-hmm. record's just gonna be timeless, you know, for yeah. forever and ever. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a I'm a massive fan of him. So that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah, one of those things one of the things I didn't expect. I knew I heard he was tall, but I didn't know he was that tall. Is he? <laughs> oh tall. <laughs> Do you know how tall he is? I he's over six feet. Yeah, like for sure. I um, I got to I got to photograph him a couple years back. Uh, it's up in hey. Seattle, and I don't know. Maybe maybe it was just having that elevated stage and then being down in the photo pit. But he was so tall, like he just. <laughs> I'm like staring up. Like who is this gentle giant? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah. He was he was really cool too. I just got chills hearing him live. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> such a raw talent, you know, and it's, yeah. and it's different than a lot of what we see these days and what we hear, so yeah, yeah big fan. Definitely. Uh, if you haven't decided to become a musician, what would you be doing now instead? Yeah, so um, 
I've gotten that question before and I've thought about that a lot. Um, I would be a mental health counselor. Um, and the reason I say that is I've always been so interested in you know people's behavior and choices and body language and just picking up on people's energy, you know? Um, and I actually, my part-time gig when I'm not doing music stuff is teaching voice lessons. Mm-hmm. And it's been so fun because I really get to have that as an outlet to give advice and listen to my students. And, you know, it's just very fascinating to me how just having like a listening ear um, can change somebody's day. So yeah, yeah I really music enjoy that. Therapeutic. So I can, I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so you've, you, I mean, even in the pandemic, I've, all I've seen on your social media is just you up to the next big thing. So like, could you tell me what your favorite, um, project was to do? Like you, you seem to be going on an adventure too, like all the time. <laughs> um, so could you tell me what your favorite, uh, adventure is, um, has been on photo and video shoots in particular? For sure. Yeah. So this one always comes to my head. Um, at the beginning of the year, I flew to Colorado mm-hmm. to meet my cousin, who is a traveling photographer. She's so cool. You know, it's like, I want to be here when I grow up because she lives in her van and just travels around and, you know, photographs weddings and artists and super fun. Um, but yeah, so we met in the Great Sand Dunes um, in Alamosa, Colorado, and we did a photo shoot there. Um, and that turned into my single artwork for Native, which was on my summer project. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was just like an amazing experience. And I really want to go back one day and do another shoot there. But yeah, just um, that was definitely my favorite. And it probably always will be my favorite because it was so just out of the blue for me. Like I'm not um, a very big like oh, let's just hop on a plane and go, you know, but this was like a 24 hour split second decision. And um, it's just really special to me, so. Yeah, that's awesome. I, um, I read a little bit of that story on your, um, on your Instagram. So I did a little, I did a little Instagram stalking. On you. Nice, <laughs> yeah, stalk me. I'm, I'm gonna stalk you back. <laughs> 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 well, um, well, the thing that I, the reason why I asked that, because I, I had a feeling that you would say Colorado, but I just saw the pictures of you just getting ready in the middle of the sand dunes, and it just, it just made me laugh because, yeah, it just sounds like it was such a fun time. <laughs> yes, it was crazy. I was like, I had sand like caked into my foundation, <laughs> you know, yeah. and like I'm trying to do a cat eye in the desert. There was one like up here, and then the other ones like this way, but it all worked out. <laughs> That's why you bring makeup remover, right? Yeah, you bring makeup remover and like, I don't know, I don't know how you can stay still standing while there's like elements happening around you while you're trying to do your makeup. It was a lot. Yeah, I pretty much (laughs) gave up. I was like, you know, this is good enough. I'm like, we're going for a natural look, so it's all good. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's good at least. (laughs) And no close-up shots. Right, exactly. Stay far. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Assuming. You've been, uh, you've, uh, you've been doing some live stream performances as well as I think you've been doing um, some live shows from uh, like really, really small venues, close and safe, safely done. Uh, so like what, uh, what, what was your favorite experience this year that you've done? involving yeah. live stream shows or live shows that you had to like do socially distance and safely. Totally. Yeah. So to come to mind, um, the live stream that I did this year, I think it was in August or September, but uh, I partnered with Bacardi and we basically just did like a, a beach themed set, which ended up being perfect because I just released the beach tapes in summer. And yeah, so that was awesome. It was so good to get up with my guys and just play a set, you know, and Mm -hmm. uh, that was really fun because my fiance, um, he used to do music as well and he sang harmonies for me. So it was just really, it felt like family up on that stage and to get to connect and like see that, you know, my audience was still tuning in was Mm -hmm. really, really encouraging. Um, Because through the pandemic, you know, you're like, oh man, are people going to forget that I do music? But it wasn't like that. You know, it was just, um, there's a lot of support, you know, for that show. Definitely. 
Yeah, so that was awesome. And then, uh, so right now I'm living in Franklin and up at our community center in the neighborhood, they had um, what's called Park Fest. Normally they call it Porch Fest and they like do it on everybody. Have you like been to a Porch Fest type thing before? Sort of, uh, Not. I've only heard about them and then there were similar things happening in our area, but not really. It's been pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. California. <laughs> Yeah, right. So it's pretty cool because, you know, you might have a hundred um, bands or, you know, um, musicians that get up on everybody's porch at different times and play a set. So anyway, it was like the COVID version of that. And we just went out to the massive park. Everybody was socially distanced outside and performed um, like in a, an acoustic thing there. So that was cool. And it was just, again, just like so fulfilling for my soul to get up there and, and do my thing. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, uh, it was really like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely was. And what area did you say you were in? I'm in Sacramento right now, so Northern California. I'm not in LA or anything like that. It's way crazier down there, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, what What is like the live music scene like? There um, has been yeah. pretty much nothing. I went to before the pandemic. I went to two shows, and that was in January, and then. Um, yeah, absolutely nothing until there was, uh, like I'm right by the Capitol building, there was a worship pro- protest that was going on. Uh, I don't know if you heard about Sean Foyt, um, but yeah. Yeah, he's been doing protests to like, I don't know, yeah, and it was that like 15,000 people showed up at the Capitol building and I got to capture that as safely as possible, which was really interesting. That's like history right there. Yeah, so I could not miss that. That was really cool. Um, yeah, super, very interesting environment. Like, there there were, I mean, although there were like twelve to 15,000 people there, most of them tried to keep their distance other than like the main group and everybody was like really, really close together and it was really intimate and um, yeah. And they let me, they let me stay backstage to uh, like stay keep safe and distant and I wore my mask and everything like it just yeah, it was really interesting though because like they didn't bother me about it they didn't pressure me to wear a mask or not to wear a mask they just right. like, whatever makes you feel safest and we're trying to like just you know do things for the sake of the music and gathering together um, and you know other stuff um, but yeah <laughs> that's so powerful yeah but that was pretty much it other than like the show's pre-covid <laughs> So yeah, nothing much, but some pretty interesting things in this history of the, the nation and the world. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm very intrigued to see what's going to happen in the next year here, and like how does live music recover and all that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, despite the fact that there's so much stuff, like so many people struggling in this industry, um, I think a lot of people are just like pushing even harder to create not only content but like the con that content has been more meaningful this year over the- than over the last 10 years like you can really see that there's that internal conflict or there's just that like i need to get this out there i don't care what people say kind of thing and it's just been so cool to see that and yeah i think it's really good to put a mark in our in our history um and change music forever and like not even in a bad way if like there yeah of course there's negatives but um think that there, there's gonna be some really cool things coming out of this. I agree, yeah. I think it's, like you said, it's going to be more authentic work coming from creative people. Mm-hmm. You know, because when everything you know is stripped away, it's like you kind of are just like raw and you have to find the pieces of you that you really want to showcase. You know, all the other clutter's taken away, you're not as busy, so it's like, I don't know, there's just more time to think and more time to be real about what your message is or who you are, Definitely. what you have to offer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally agree with you. Well, I mean, this is kind of on the same thread, but how uh, has this year transferred, tra- transformed your music and creative process as a whole? It has been so transformational for me personally. Um, like I said earlier, before COVID, I was always running seven days a week, like barely had time to sleep and when all this happened and the shutdown the first initial shutdown happened I was like okay I've got all of this music that I maybe haven't finished I have demos of it um you know or just at varying like 
stages in the process of creation. And I thought, there's no more excuses. Like I have got to sit down and come up with a plan and get these projects done. So I started making a record with my roommate Garrett Blaus, and that's where the beach shakes came from. And then that um, that led me to doing like a live recording, which is the EP that's coming out on January 29th. Um, so it really for me was like a time to get a bunch of content done, you know, make new visuals. Um, pull from the archives, as I call it, you know, like old footage and, and apply that to my new recording. So it's kind of like a blend of, you know, everything I had been working on over the past three years, but finally, you know, putting those projects together and then getting a plan and, and releasing them. And it's exciting because I can say I've done that with all of the stuff that I had in the archives and it's getting ready to come out. So that yeah it's like it's just been a, such a big year so like you said you know there are negatives but there have been so many positives and like silver linings yeah definitely i i think we can come out of this year like ho hoping for better um i don't know there's just this saying that i heard um like sometimes when you fall so hard so f fall so far down the only direction you can look is up and i think that's the case for some people um especially like struggling in this year um I mean it's kind of a vapid statement in some cases because you can't you can't account for every situation and that stays the statement but it could I don't know I think it I think it has applied to me this year a little bit so you know it's kind of cool <laughs> yes it's very cool yeah I love seeing what uh, you guys are doing and and like I watch back some of your interviews and it's just really cool I can tell that you love what you do yeah, yeah, we, we all love what we do. We're all so passionate and so excited to just get on the next project. And um, yeah, I've never worked with such a wonderful team of people. Um, and I like, we, we all come out of our meetings just smiling, or at least I do. I come out oh, of the meeting so excited and like, oh my gosh, we get to do this, we get to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. really cool. Oh man, yeah, it's such a blessing, I think, to be in the creative world and, and like have that purpose right now, you know, when everything feels kind of just so different and you know yeah it's just it's a it's a big deal you know and that's one thing I have seen this year is like man I've been downplaying the awesomeness of what I get to do every day yeah yeah I mean it's easy to take advantage of something once it becomes a normal thing so yeah. kind of this change in routines really put things into perspective for a lot of people yeah yeah uh when did you start when did you start writing your single words um, so that began like two years ago okay. um, and then so there's like a Soul Train inspired um, film I would say um, that turned into a visualizer with lyrics on it <laughs> it took a journey but anyway um, that footage was um, taken in 2017 so yeah that, that stuff I would like to say is kind of like old but it's also going to be fresh because I've never really shown it to anybody oh that's cool yeah, and then it's coming out on New Year's Day, correct? Right, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you think it's going to represent the beginning of 2021 as a single? Mm -hmm. So that song for me is written from a space of like, I wanted to stand up for myself and I wanted to like say the things that I had never said before. Um, and so I hope that it just gives people that encouragement that you can speak up about what you believe in and like what you're dreaming of yeah definitely do you want to describe a little bit more about the process and the song's shaping i know you said you it was written about two years ago and then it's uh, been a process already but like yeah just tell me a little bit about it sure so yeah i was like in a home studio with one of my friends and we just started out um with a simple chord progression on the keys and then I I just had a microphone connected and I was like mumbling whatever I was mumbling um, and a melody just came to me really quickly and uh, so that song yeah that it actually started out kind of like an 80s retro pop thing and then it turned into this more like jazzy soul vibe that you know everybody will hear on on the single when it comes out um, so yeah, I think the, the jazz soul influence came from playing it live mm -hmm. with my band, 
you know, we created that arrangement um, and, and it just felt right. So when we went in to record it live, that's what we went with. So it's been through a few different versions, but yeah, I'm excited about what it turned into. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear it. Thank you. I can't <laughs> wait to share it. Yeah. What do you, um, what are your goals for 2021? I have a lot of goals, but the biggest one is to make an LP or an album. Cool. So I don't know what that all looks like yet, but I've been writing like crazy and I have a lot of songs that I'm excited to flesh out and um, yeah, and then just having really great visual content is another thing um, that's so important to me. Um, a new merch line. I want to like put something out there that's more like lifestyle apparel, you know, because I love fashion. So yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe make a music video. Like, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of goals, but I would say the album is like the biggest goal. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a pretty reasonable goal considering how much you've been writing and releasing. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Keep you guys posted on it. Yeah, please do. I want to hear all about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I have one more question for you. Uh, sure. How can we, how can we, um, like everybody, best support you, and um, where can we find you to connect to your music? Definitely, yeah. So, following my artist profile on Spotify is awesome. That way, when I release something, it goes to your release radar right away. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely streaming on Spotify would be awesome. Adding me to your playlist, all that good stuff. Um, and follow me on, on Instagram would be awesome as well because I that's probably where I post the most and I, you know, I'm an Instagram fiend. I love it. Um, but that's at Kara Frazier underscore on there. Um, you can like my Facebook page as well. It's just Kara Frazier Music. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube, all that good stuff. And just stay engaged. You know, that's all I ask for. I love making the music, you know, and it's just like um, to have people to listen to it and enjoy it would be really awesome. Yeah, sweet. Well, um, that is all uh, the questions I have for you. Um, is there anything, any final words before we head off? Thank you for having me and for doing this. This is yeah. like one of the bigger interviews I've done. So this was exciting. And yeah, hopefully we can stay connected and, Definitely. Um, you know. Yeah, well, thanks for, yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, we really appreciated hearing you, your, uh, what you had to say. I really love talking with you. You too. This was so fun. Yeah. Cool. Okay, girl. Well, happy holidays, and I hope that um, your new year is much better. <laughs> yeah, you too. Um, let's just cross our fingers for a better year next year. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll, uh, I'll chat with you later. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye. Bye.